Hi everybody, greetings from Francis Ford Coppola Winery in Geyserville. This is our next edition of our Who What Wine Pairing, which I'm very excited about today. The Who is uh, myself, Chef Tim Bodell, from the winery here. And joining me today is uh, Rick Toyota here. He is our Vice President of Direct-to-Consumer. Uh, Rick and I have worked together for many years, and he is an incredibly nice man and even more knowledgeable than wine uh, that he is nice. So it's just a real honor to have you here today, Rick. Thank well, you so thank you, much. Chef. Thanks for uh, inviting me. Yeah, boy, we're going to have a lot of fun today. Yes, uh, we are. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, digging in here. For... Yeah. <laughs> So now that we know the who, the what today, uh, we're going to be talking about pizzas. One of my favorite topics, one of my absolute favorite things to eat. You know, I love eating with my hands. So this is kind of one of those iconic dishes that you can eat with your hands. And you know, what a, a storied history of pizzas. Um, and the wines, of course, we're going to be foc focusing on our wines in our diamond series, uh, like we have for the last several sessions of our who, what wine pairing. And uh, of course, we'll be uh, talking about some of our diamond cans as well. Uh, please uh, check out our website, thefamilycopola.com, uh, for an awesome uh, promotion. You get uh, six four packs that come in for just under $100. And upon checkout, enter the code, the promotion code, Diamond Cans at checkout for an awesome screaming deal on these really, really cool and fun uh, diamond cans, which I can't wait to hear all about. Mm -hmm. Um, so, what do you say, Rick? Shall we get started? I'm looking forward to this. All right. uh, I think I read a statistic that some 13 million Americans eat pizza nightly. Is that right? So that's uh, an amazing statistic for a food, uh, an actual food item. So. Unbelievable. And I'm probably contributing to that on a weekly basis. So. <laughs> pizza is so good. I mean, there's, there's so many different varieties mm -hmm. and flavor profiles. It's sort of a, a blank palette for all it, kinds of different it, flavors. It, it's so regional, too. Yeah, I mean, you've true. got deep dish from Chicago. You've got that thin crust from New York. And everyone's telling you it's the right way to have pizza. <laughs> and everyone else is wrong. Yeah, so. that's right. Uh -huh. All right, well, let's get started. Um, to start, we're going to focus on a couple of our iconic pizzas that we serve here at the winery. So the first one we're going to be talking about is uh, Pizza Luigino, which is our take on the classic Neapolitan style uh, margarita pizza, um, which uh, in Naples is, is very specific, right? You have, your, you have your dough, which is rolled out in a very specific way your uh, hand crushed tomatoes as the sauce, fresh uh, buffalo mozzarella, and some olive oil, and that's it. And this is our take that we serve here in Rustic. Um, now, the reason it has the name Pizza Luigino, when Francis was first exposed to pizza at the, at the uh, young age of five, um, at a place called Luigino's near the theater district in New York City where he was living. His dad was a tremendous accomplished musician and Luigino's was a local hangout for all these music musicians. So uh, Francis, at the age of five, tried his first slice of pizza, and he describes it as an absolutely wonderful experience that has stuck with him for his whole life. So um, without further ado, here is our uh, Pizza Luigino, which uh, we make here. We make our dough fresh daily. Uh, the sauce is... Uh, hand crushed San Marzano tomatoes and then it's topped with some fresh mozzarella and basil from our garden. Okay Rick let me get you a slice here. Okay. okay let's see. So I think you know we're going to be getting going to be getting some uh, sweetness and some acidity from these beautiful San Marzano tomatoes the creaminess and richness, and a little bit of salinity from our fresh mozzarella, and uh, that nice sort of peppery notes from the basil, mm -hmm. and grassy, earthy notes from the olive oil. One of my favorite pizzas, I mean, for me, this is sort of the, the benchmark when I go out to have pizza, right? I mean, I wanna try sort of their basic margarita and see how they do. It's, there's not much to hide behind on this pizza. It's just those real classical flavors. This is very pure, I mean, the tomatoes really come out. Mm -hmm. That little bit of basil that's on there is just enough to give that herbaceous quality. Mm -hmm. 
there is a reason why basil and uh, tomatoes go together so well. That that flavor combination just mm -hmm. complements the herbaceous and the acidity and the sweetness. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of that uh, the cheese on there. And this is uh, mozzarella. Correct. Uh, that once again just adds that creaminess. I mean, mm -hmm. I think this. Uh, is a great way to start a meal, mm -hmm. probably a great way to start this program with something mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. What kind of wine would you gravitate towards well, um, from our diamond? We want liner? to make sure that the wine doesn't overpower this pizza because it's such a, a, a soft and subtle character. Yeah. I think I'm going to have us check out uh, our uh, Francis Ford Coppola Gold Tier uh, Oregon Pinot Noir. Mm. So this comes from uh, the great the fruit comes from Oregon, and the difference really between Pinots from Oregon and California is a little bit more subtlety, right? Okay. A little bit more acidity. Uh, California uh, tends to have a little bit more richness of fruit. Okay. And what you want to do is uh, kind of, uh, since there's some really nice acidity and, and, and tomato uh, character to this, something like this will be a nice balance. It won't overpower uh, the flavors of the pizza. Excellent. At least that's my assumption. <laughs> we'll see, huh? Mm -hmm. That's great. And the netting, uh, that's a real indicator of uh, some... Yeah, our gold tier really does have the netting on it. And uh, once again, it's a... Uh, I, I, I think one of the things that Francis does so well is uh, Im, uh, the, his imagery of what he uh, sees in products and something like this. And, yeah. you know, even though it is a, a, a little bit more packaging, that really kind of pops out when you're in the supermarket or somewhere looking for this wine. Yeah, I've never seen anything like mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it sure is a beautiful presentation. Excellent. So. Now, what, I know you're very familiar with that Oregon property. Can you tell us a little bit about yes. it? Yes. Uh, uh, this fruit actually comes from multiple locations throughout Oregon, both okay. in the north and the south. But we recently, about a year and a half ago, opened up a brand new winery in the Dundee Hills of Oregon okay. called Domaine de Broy. Mm. And uh, Domaine de Broy is uh, Coppola's first venture into uh, the uh, greater, I mean, the Willamette Valley of Oregon, where Pinot really is king. Okay. And if you're a serious uh, producer of Pinots, you really do need to be in, in Oregon. Yeah. Uh, so a little bit of the fruit, uh, uh, actually does come from our estate property there. Nice. So let me give you a little bit Thank of that. Thank you, Rick. Okay, cheers. 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 Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. So there's a little bit of kind of that cherry quality in this. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's some acidity and there's a little bit of earthiness. So mm -hmm. I think one of the wonderful things I think about tomatoes mm -hmm. It's full of umami, right? Mm -hmm. So it just enhances the flavor of the wine, and the wine having umami enhances the flavor of the I pizza. I love that. What a cool way to look yeah. at that. That is really cool. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that first slice so much. Mm -hmm. I ate the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Let me try another bite. Mm. That's interesting because uh, once you taste the uh, pizza, mm -hmm. the fruit really comes out of this much more intensely. There's mm. a that, that kind of soft cherry quality becomes a little bit more intense with cherry and cranberry for me. Ooh. Yeah, a little bit of Bing cherry and cranberry. Mm. Boy, that is delicious. Yeah. I think that really works. Yeah. Uh, yeah, once again, with, with something where the ingredients are so basic, mm -hmm. you don't want to hide those ingredients and you want, uh, if we went to a heavier red, yeah. it would probably overpower these flavors yeah. in, in, in the pizza itself. Definitely. Yeah. Boy, terrific. No. Boy, that's a great start. Yeah. Excellent, and what a delicious wine, too. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, that is spectacular. Boy, that is a real treat. Yeah. Good call, and a good start. All right, next up, we're gonna be talking about another classic rustic pizza, which is our Pizza Sophia. Now, the story behind this pizza is Francis's daughter, Sophia, when she was first being introduced uh, to the world of pizza by by Mr. Coppola at the age of about eight or nine. This was really her favorite. So it's a it's a, another a pizza in a, a Neapolitan style. Nice thin crust cooked in a very hot oven with a little blistering on the crust and really simply prepared with some fresh mozzarella and a little bit of oregano. And we put it in the oven, we cook it until it's just beautiful, crisp, spotted on the crust. Then we take it out and when, it, when we take it out, um, while the pizza is very, very hot still, 
We, let, we drape on paper thin slices of prosciutto to Parma. And Sophia absolutely loved that, that combination of that salty cured meat and uh, the, the, you know that delicious crispy uh, pizza with the mozzarella on it. And what we do is we top it with uh, a little bit of wild arugula, toss in extra virgin olive oil and salt, and then garnish it with a little shaved Parmesan. It's one of the most popular dishes here in Rustic and also poolside and one of my personal favorites. So. What yeah, I always say? feel good eating this pizza because I feel like <laughs> I'm eating a healthy uh, uh, a meal. It's just that I eat so many slices of it, it may counterbalance the uh, whole yeah, effect of exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah, it's almost part salad, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really, it's a beautiful pizza. Um, okay. Oops. A little windy out here, battling yep. the elements today. I'm going to make sure we get a little bit of that Parmesan as well. So this, this pizza here is hitting all kinds of notes, right? Mm -hmm. We have the, the richness, the salinity of the, of the, the cheese, uh, both on the pizza itself and the shaved Parmesan. Those little peppery notes from the arugula, which I'm really curious to uh, see your take on. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that salty sort of funkiness of the prosciutto de Parma. Mm. This, is a, this is a great, great pizza. Wow. That, that wild arugula just adds some really uh, light uh, kind of pepper characteristic and the herbaceous quality. Mm -hmm. the, the saltiness of the meat and that slightly kind of nuttiness of the Parmesan. Mm -hmm. Once again, the flavors are not very strong, but the combination, I, I think that's the best thing about pizzas in general. Mm -hmm. It's the combinations you create out of them, yeah. right? And, Greater and, than the sum of their parts, mm -hmm. huh? Well, First thing that hit me with something like this is what is a good contrast? Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of contrast on here, but what's a complementary contrast? Yeah. And I can't keep thinking of prosciutto and peaches or prosciutto and melon, right? right? Yeah. Uh, which is a, a, another favorite uh, a dish of mine. So I think we should try the uh, the rosé, uh, the Ooh, diamond rosé. Uh, the rosé does uh, in the nose have some of that white peach characteristic. Hmm some uh you know like wild raspberry characteristics to it uh and then you also get a little bit of that melon a hint of citrus okay. uh, uh sort of like a uh a red uh, grapefruit type of character nice. uh, with that and i think this may work with uh, especially highlighting that contrast that it does in other dishes with the prosciutto mm, terrific yeah rosé is generally a pretty good pairing with uh cured meats, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, I, I think it has Beautiful. the fruitiness. It's not a sweet wine, but it has the fruitiness that counterbalances the saltiness of cured meats. Mm, yeah, so, love that. Boy, it's yeah, stunning. And there it is on that nose, that peach and, mm -hmm. and, and raspberry kind mm -hmm. of character. Mm, you know, when, when people smell and taste wine, you know, uh, wine people always have these descriptors for it. Yeah. And tasting is so personal. It's yeah. not, this is, based on my experience and memories. Yeah. But everyone has their own experience, so no one could tell you that's not what you're smelling <laughs> or tasting. That's the experience you have, so, yeah. Yeah, and you, uh, I mean, you're so knowledgeable about wine. You've taught me so much over the years. Um, in fact, you've held classes here for our staff on wine history and tasting, all those kinds of things. Yeah, I think it's important, especially if you work in the industry, that you have more knowledge than just the wines that you produce. Mm -hmm. It gives you a good background and you kind of, I mean, I'm a history buff, so yeah. there's so much history behind wine and that's mm -hmm. what really attracted me to doing the classes for everybody. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. really incredible. Oh boy! This yeah, I is... think this is working with the, the that uh, prosciutto especially. Yeah, it really cuts helps mm -hmm. cut through that richness too, the acidity in the wine. And that is fantastic. Oh, mm -hmm. oh! Looks like uh, excuse me. We always get interrupted in these things, don't we? Right. <laughs> I think we have a pizza delivery. Strangely enough, let's see what we got going on here. Hey, all right. How are you doing? Thank you. You got that tip on the credit card, right? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Good deal. Good timing. Mm -hmm. um, that that is a, that's that's an amazing pairing. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. That is just spectacular. And over the few weeks of, of doing these who, who what wine pairing videos. I'm just finding that this this line of wines here are so food friendly. I mean, they're very approachable. You can drink them without 
food, but they, I mean, they really sing with wine. They're very approachable. I, I think that's the beauty of our entire portfolio is even in uh, uh, other uh, areas of our portfolio, the food is always, uh, the wine is always approachable. It's mm -hmm. not meant to be uh, 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 by itself, it really is meant to be with a meal. I mean, that's what the whole philosophy for Francis is, yeah, uh, you know, that true. that this is all part of a full experience, yeah. not just isolated experiences. Yeah. Love mm -hmm. that. That's incredible. All right, well, we went Ooh. through a couple of these uh, delicious, classic, rustic pizzas here, which are a couple of my absolute favorites with uh, great pairings. Please try them at home, let us know what you think. Um, next up here, Rick. This is going to be a fun one. Yeah. Um, this is a uh, pesto pizza, right? So we, we made this in rustic. Um, it's made with our with our with our dough, uh, made in that classic Neapolitan style of slapping the dough, which is a very sp uh, specific technique. Um, we've topped that with a very classic basil pesto of pine nuts, olive oil, fresh basil from the garden, and some Parmesan olive oil to bring it all together. And then we topped it with some uh, mozzarella and then these blistered tomatoes. So the tomatoes right now are just terrific. We've been kind of waiting all year for the for uh, tomatoes. Um, these uh, came out of our garden, um, really the, the first tomatoes of the year. Uh, the cherry tomatoes for me kind of uh, just mature quicker. They're just smaller and they, they get juicier and, and, and sweeter earlier than their larger counterparts. Uh, so I'm really excited about this pizza. I mean, that's another great way of pre presenting tomatoes besides just in the sauce itself, because yeah. they're just little nuggets of concentrated flavor when you, when you cook them like that. Definitely. There's lots of different ways to um, have pizza or uh, tomatoes on pizza. Mm -hmm. I love doing this, get them a little cooked ahead of time. We, we like to blister them uh, and, and just sort of soften them and have them start releasing their juices. And, um, and then give them a little squeeze, mm -hmm. right, before they go onto the pizza. And all that juice of the tomato um, sort of contributes to the sauce. So here. Have we done a, a piece like this in rustic uh, during season? Yes. Um, whoa. whoa. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look out. Battling the elements yep. out here. The late afternoon, that know. wind always picks up uh, on us here. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Mm. Okay. I'm going to move that tomato towards the end here so I have a bite of that when I dig in. Yeah. Boy, those are beautiful. Yeah. Well, this will be a little messy one here. <laughs> Turn the camera away. Mmm. <laughs> mm. That's the garden right there. Mm. Sure mm. is, right? Wow. That just tastes like summer. So fresh. But the flavors are really intense. I mean, you have the pesto, you've got that, that burst of the tomato that, that's so vibrant in here with the acidity and everything. Uh, you know, this is, this is one for us to kind of shift gears a little bit. I think, I think a white wine would go well with this. Cool. Uh, uh, and with the acidity and the basil and, and that herbaceous quality. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I, I think we should go like with the Saw Blanc in the can. Cool. Very so, cool. thank you. I mean, uh, this is something I could see you eating out on the patio, you know, uh, just bringing that out and enjoying it uh, on a day like this yeah. uh, for lunch or before you uh, sit down to a full dinner. Yeah. Uh, just sitting out there, and what better than to have a bucket full of the uh, uh, the cans, the diamond cans to Can't uh, beat it. slosh around mm -hmm. some ice water at the mm -hmm. bottom of your cooler. Yep. Can't beat it. Yep. Cheers. It's gold. Yeah. Ooh, red. <laughs> That's a beautiful mm -hmm. little presentation there. That's delicious. So Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. So Sauvignon Blanc is very, uh, uh, there, there's a lot of acidity, right? And you mm -hmm. get a little bit of the kind of the citrus quality, almost the rinds of citrus mm -hmm. fruit, like Definitely. lemon or tangerine. Mm -hmm. um, the acidity, I think, complements the acidity from the tomatoes and, uh, and, and the herbaceousness. And there's always just this little hint of a pinch of dill or something in, yeah. uh, that's something that's uh, uh, green in, yeah. in Saw Blanc. I can see and that. with this garden characteristic of this, I think mm -hmm. this is a nice compliment because there's a refreshing quality mm -hmm. uh, to Saw Blanc. And, uh, and 
uh, especially in the cans, it's a different context. Yeah. It's a much more casual context than a glass. Yeah. And and I think that will uh, your your attitude of how you approach this is as important as uh, the vessel you drink it from. Yeah, so. I like that. That is awesome. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Those tomatoes are so sweet too. Yeah, aren't they? Boy, they're really just getting good right now. Boy, that's delicious. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I think that works wonderfully. Good choice. Mm -hmm. And you know what's nice? Mm. When you first drank the Sau Blanc, there was a definite tartness to it. Yeah. And then after you, you took a bite of this and went back to the Sau Blanc, mm -hmm. that tartness kind of died down and I think you got a little bit more of the fruit. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, boy, that is... Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, that is, that is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, don't forget, everybody out there watching, check out uh, thefamilycopola.com for a special promotion on these amazing cans. Uh, enter the code DIAMONDCANS at checkout, and you get six four-packs that come in just under 100 bucks, so it's over $20 in savings. Um, awesome promotion. Such a great time of year on these hot summer days to have some of these. Um, and what else is in this line? Rick, we have a, a Pinot? We have, we have a Pinot. We have a, a Chardonnay. Uh, we have a Pinot Gris, uh, Grigio as well. Awesome. Uh, and you may have seen that the uh, Pinots are kind of on ice here. Yeah. I mean, really, if something's in a can, you want to throw it in an ice <laughs> chest and take it with you. And Pinot is one of those reds that uh, you could actually chill down yeah. and it will be refreshing on a hot day like today. Yeah, yeah we, uh, we enjoyed um, one of those uh, Pinot cans last week yeah. chilled and it was delicious. Yeah. Really? Oh, looks like we got another delivery coming through. Excellent call. Thank you, mm -hmm. Rick. That's terrific. Okay, what do we got here? Ah, oh, another pizza at the door here. Oh, you guys are hungry. Hey, I think I remember you. Awesome. <laughs> you Thank right. you so much. Car, right? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. This is a Chicago pizza. Oh, boy, look at that. That is gorgeous. Um, uh, last week we uh, talked about my uh, trip to Chicago uh, a couple years back and I got to try a Chicago deep dish pizza in Chicago for the first time and it was really such a cool experience um, and w what a storied history it's very unique pizza it's thick you know it's not a, a thin crust pizza it's got a it's got some depth to it I don't know if you can see that uh, but it's got a beautiful beautiful golden brown crust uh, really piled high with ingredients um, this contains uh, spinach and mushrooms. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that tastes. Now, I know there's probably people from uh, the Chicago area yes. that are watching us. Yes. Is this a pizza you're supposed to eat with a fork and a knife, or are you supposed to eat it by hand? Or oh uh, boy, that's a good question. <laughs> I just pick it up and eat it. But, <laughs> you know, it's it's about the size of a lasagna. Uh, yeah. So um, a fork and a knife may come in handy. Uh -huh. Um, so we, we will do our best here, Rick. Um, maybe... Well, you're the one wearing white, so I'll, I'll follow your lead. <laughs> you have to put on a fresh jacket after this. Uh, okay, let's take a look at this. Like you were saying, this is a you know a, a regional American specialty, mm -hmm. one of the, the classic dishes of Chicago with the Italian beef sandwich and the uh, amazing Chicago hot dog that we tried last week. Um, I think Giordano's um, is the Chicago deep dish style pizza mm -hmm. I tried when I was there, but I know there's a, n a number of uh, legendary mm -hmm. Chicago pizzas. Look, wow. at that. Look at that cross section of that. That is just beautiful. Piled thick with cheese and tomato sauce. That looks Wilted great. Wilted mushrooms and spinach. So, Boy, that's going to be good. That's interesting because... Uh, the components, once again, are really simple, but the presentation is so much more robust. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And uh, here we can see the, the sauce on the, on the top of the pizza, um, which is a, a different variation. Um, but boy, mm. that, is, that is really beautiful. It looks wow. moist, it looks... No, actually, you can pick it up fairly easily mm -hmm. when you need it. That just yeah. looks delicious. Yeah, if this is the improper way of doing it, forgive us, but this is really good. <laughs> wow. That's good. Everybody out there in Chicago, what's your favorite deep dish? 
in the city. I love that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a mushroom guy. Yeah. I love those earthiness. That mushrooms, yeah. there's just enough of, this, uh, of the greens in there to to balance out with a little acidity with the tomato sauce, mm -hmm. but that uh, the cheese yeah. gives a richness. Even though the flavor isn't overpowering, it right. gives such a richness to this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think we need to go Beautiful. to something uh, with a little bit more weight to it. Not okay. too much. Okay. Because the flavors are still very subtle and well melded together. Okay. Uh, I think this is time for Merlot. Excellent. I think this is going to be a, a great pairing with our uh, Francis Ford Coppola Diamond Series Merlot or Diamond Merlot. Uh, uh, Merlot is one of those grapes that doesn't get the credit that it does. Some of probably the most sought after and expensive Bordeaux actually come from what they call the right bank, which is primarily uh, 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 Merlot. Wow. Uh, there was a movie that came out about a decade or so ago <laughs> that kind of poo-pooed Merlot <laughs> and uh, did it un uh, an injustice. Uh, it is one of my favorite reds just it because it's such a diverse red. Mm -hmm. It comes from uh, the same region where Cabernet comes from. Okay. It grows in the same areas that Cabernet grows, okay. but it's not going to be as tannic and heavy. Okay. Uh, it's a really dark colored red wine. In fact, the name Merlot is uh, ancient French for blackbird, Good and was called good. that because of the dark color of, of, of the fruit. Wow, that's cool. I never knew that. Yeah. Boy, that's really cool. So oh. this is going to be delicious. And what a, a striking uh, label. Yeah, these labels, uh, especially recently when we've updated the, the uh, color profile of these, uh, they really uh, uh, snap. Yeah. Uh, on you when you look at them. Beautiful. There you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So Merlot. Mm. And what are you getting on the nose there? You know, there's a lot of that fruit, that dark berry mm -hmm. character, mm -hmm. a little bit of plum, mm -hmm. uh, some spices, you know, a little bit of kind of a, a cocoa and, and maybe some uh, uh, licorice mm -hmm. kind of characters mm -hmm. on there. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Boy, that is spectacular. Yeah, once again, when you're actually tasting it, it doesn't have that bite like sometimes the Cabernet has. Yeah. Uh, and and I, for me, this is I'm trying to balance out the tomato sauce and the cheese on this. Mm -hmm. Let's see how you did, Rick. Mm. Works. Yeah. And, and this is the beauty about food and wine. Mm -hmm. The food flavors change a little bit and the wine flavors change mm -hmm. because that dark fruit disappeared to a little bit more of that raspberry strawberry quality mm -hmm. when we uh, had the pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that is delicious. Yeah. Good call. I, I Wait, think something satisfying about biting a nice thick piece of pizza too. Oh yeah. I mean, there's something said about thin crust and Neapolitan style, but that's so satisfying to get a big bite of vegetables and cheese and sauce and crust. I mean, once again, that's, I think, the beauty of pizza, right? Yeah. Because there are regional differences. There, uh, well, depending on where you go, there is no right or wrong on pizzas. <laughs> but pizza really, the, the crust and the sauce is really the platform, I think, for layering flavors with yes. different elements. Yeah, Just like the wines are, uh, are done the same way. Yeah. So I think that's why uh, every uh, stereotype you have of a, a, of a plate with pizza always has a glass of wine next yeah, to it. Yeah, that's true, that's true. You know, I love doing pizza parties at the house, like on mm -hmm. a summer afternoon. I'll make the dough ahead of time. I like doing them on, on my barbecue. Oh, we'll yeah. Just have a few different ingredients, you know, maybe a couple different sauces and some olive oil, a few different toppings ready to go, and then everybody can kind of make their own, and, and we can try different wines with it. You know, and that's really one of the great things, too, because, uh, you know, we don't think about the crust, right? Right. But those flavors change depending on how you bake it, right? Yeah, Whether yeah. it's on directly on fire Good point. Or, or in an oven or something, it really does change those flavors, which impact everything else you put on top yeah. of it. Good point. Yeah, yeah, whether the crust has maybe sugar or no mm -hmm. sugar, olive oil, no olive oil, the caramelization and the amount mm -hmm. of caramelization. You know, I mentioned true. umami before. Yeah. Uh, just for those that don't know what umami is, it's actually a fifth sense that we have, and it's yeah. not a specific flavor, it's an enhancer, mm -hmm. right? Because one of the things, for example, is uh, anything that's fermented, like soy sauce or fish sauce or, mm -hmm. or, or vinegar or anything, really enhances it. Parmesan cheese, I think, is a great uh, 
uh, item mm -hmm. because what Parmesan does yeah, is that it's a uh, aged cheese, right? Yeah. So it has a bit of that umami. And if you know, if you recall, when you put Parmesan on something, it doesn't make it cheesy, yes. like putting, you know, Monterey Jack or cheddar, but it enhances the flavors around it, like and that's what umami that. does. It just enhances flavors. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Boy, I'm interesting to, interested to see what that does. Mm. It just in, increases the sauce, mm -hmm. I think. I just mm -hmm. the tomato characteristic. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's good. Yeah. That is really, oh. Looks like we may have another delivery. Mm -hmm. Boy, we really couldn't have timed this delivery any better. You know, you have to invite me over here more because this is great <laughs> to have all this food coming by. Yeah, that sounds good. Hey, whoa, oh my gosh. You need a forklift for this pizza. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, go. thank you very right. much. Oh man, look at this. That's my <clears throat> size pizza right there. Yeah, I don't know like what it. you're having. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this is, oh, look at this. Oh, oh my gosh, wow, this is like a shrine to all things wonderful right here. This reminds me a little of home, a little of Philadelphia. This is a uh, Northeast or New York style pizza. So it's, you know, it's a descendant of the Neapolitan pizza. You can see it's a thin crust. Um, this particular one, we have some pepperoni, mushrooms, and it looks like some sausage on here. Mm. Uh, boy, that looks good. Yeah. Are you getting full yet? Not for this, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> Boy, that is, that is amazing. I didn't really know they made boxes this big. Boy, that's beautiful. Boy, it smells terrific. Oh, wow. Yeah, I remember uh, growing up in Philly, we used to um, order the pepperoni pizzas, and as the pepperonis would cook, they'd kind of curl up and then fill up with a little bit of grease. Yeah. And, uh, boy, that's uh, the first Friday of every month. Uh-huh. My mom and dad would treat us to pizza night, so uh -huh. this is bringing back some great memories. But I remember... Eating, eating big slices like this. You buy it by the slice. Oh yeah. Uh, downtown, any uh, any pizza place. Uh, so this this is gonna be good. So, so like, a lot, a lot of meat grease on here. in there. I love, but uh, whenever I have pepperoni pizza with my wife, she'll always blot it just because <laughs> she's looking out for my health. So I only get that treat when she's not in town. <laughs> Don't tell her. <laughs> Hopefully she's not watching. Well, you know, mm. something like this might be good with a little bit of the red peppers on it. I um, love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, these are our Mamarella's uh, chili flakes. Mm -hmm. We offer this in okay. rustic. This is... Okay, so I was in uh, Brooklyn not too long ago, uh, before everything happened uh, last summer, and uh, there was a certain way I was told I'm supposed to eat this pizza. That, that it's just that you have to fold it <laughs> and, and and really go out, out out for it like this. Nice technique. As an East Coaster, I fully approve that technique. Mm -hmm. mm. Boy, that looks good. It smells good. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Wow. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. A lot of flavor in this. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, you know the uh, mushrooms are another driver of umami. Okay. And so with the mushrooms on it, you would think it'd be lost with all the sausage and the pepper, pepperoni and everything. Yeah. It just enhances all those other flavors around it. Yeah. This is fair, I mean, as thin as this is, even though the other one was a thick crust, yeah. I think this is a, a, almost a little bit more robust. The other mm -hmm. one was richer with all that cheese. Yes. But this one's a little more robust in its flavor. Definitely. And I think it really does deserve a, 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 a bigger wine. Okay. This is what the claret is made for. Oh, nice. uh, claret being primarily Cabernet. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the term claret is an old English term for the type of wines that were primarily Bordeaux or Cab based okay. uh, when uh, the British once ruled the region okay. uh, of Bordeaux. Mm. And it was actually meant for a little bit of a lighter style and mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that our claret is light, okay. but it's certainly not extremely robust. That's okay. once again in this line of wines are such good food wines. Yeah. But it's not lacking in flavor. It's yeah, not wow. lacking in the Cabernet characteristic. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, I can't wait. This is one of my all-time favorite wines. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me how spice, and we put a little chili flake on here, tell me how spice determines kind of what you're thinking about what would pair with. Uh, you know, I think food. it's like anything else. Uh, 
I, I don't want to get too heavy, but yeah. it, think about you know painting. You yeah. you layer things in, right? Okay. Anything in the arts, there's always layers to the presentation. Mm -hmm. Pizza's the same way. I mean, you as a chef yes. are layering flavors over flavors. Yeah, so. Definitely. If you put too much of that on there, all you're right. going to get is the burn from the pepper. You right. just need a little to get that ting, ting, uh, that little sting or that tingle from the heat of the yeah. pepper. But that also heightens the senses for all the other flavors. Yeah, uh, definitely. You don't want anything to be too bold, everything to sort of mm -hmm. be in unison. Oh. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things for this is, uh, oh, butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be a good omen. Yeah, definitely. Um, Boy, a beautiful day out here at the mm -hmm. pool. That's terrific. Now the blend on this Claret? Uh, it's primarily Cabernet. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and um, one, one of the reasons why this is so popular, I yeah. think, as a, a wine in our portfolio, mm -hmm. is because it's so approachable. You know, sometimes when you get a Cabernet, they're so big they have to you know lay them down for a couple of years yeah. and, and everything like that this one is very approachable from the start without really losing the hardiness of, of a cabernet Re ready to drink huh yeah mm. oh boy that that nose is great too mm -hmm. there's a lot of dark fruit a little bit of spiciness which i think will complement some of the, the the characteristic the other thing you know that little pools of uh, of oil and fat in oh. the pepperoni that cuts the tannins and the harshness that sometimes comes with a Cabernet. Cool. That's very cool. Wow, that is, oh my gosh. Oh yeah. I love that. That's drinking so well. And I got a good feeling about this mm -hmm. one. Boy, that is a terrific pizza too, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's dinner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and call it a day. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting into this pizza. You've got another one coming? Unbelievable. <laughs> hope, you're, uh, hope you're in for the long haul. Oh boy, that was, I think mm -hmm. that was one of my favorite pairings so far. That was spectacular. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, we got another pizza here. It's incredible delivery, gentlemen. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Oh, look at this. Everybody knows this. This is. Pizza Hut. A Domino's. Domino's. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh, we just lost a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. This is our Domino's, one of the largest uh, franchise-owned uh, pizzas, uh, pizza companies. And a Saturday night at two o'clock's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, so this is a polarizing pie right here, if I've ever seen one. Um, I don't know if there's uh, a more controversial pizza than the one we're about to embark on here, the Hawaiian pizza. So I think it's either a love it or you hate it kind mm -hmm. of deal. I think uh, it's a West Coast kind of thing, isn't it? I, I think so, yeah, I think so. Because yeah. um, I did have a debate about this uh, with a friend of mine from New York that said that is not a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's alone, I don't <laughs> think he's alone. But yeah, we have a you know classic, classic, uh, uh, Domino's Pizza right here. I think this is actually one of their best-selling pizzas, too. Um, and I read an article, this was voted one of the most influential pizzas mm -hmm. of all time. Uh, I guess maybe uh, for better or for worse. Uh, but looks like we have some shaved uh, Canadian bacon, it appears. Some uh, tomato, oh no, sorry, some pineapple, mm -hmm. tomato sauce, and a little bit of cheese. Okay. So let's, let's try this. So uh, flavors on this, we're going to get you know, some sweetness from uh, sweetness and acidity from the from the pineapple, some richness and salt from the cheese and the Canadian bacon. Um, now I don't think this is a smoked bacon. I think this is more of a cured pork loin mm -hmm. type preparation. So I don't okay. think we'll be getting any smoke off of this pizza. No, but you'll get what that nice think? saltiness. What do you think of the Hawaiian pizza? You know it. You it know, it matches food pairing. It yeah. is that sweet, savory, and salty, right? Uh, combination that, that comes together. And if you just had said pizza and yeah. pineapple by yeah. itself, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. But add a pig to that, and boy, <laughs> it, it, it changes everything. Yeah, good boy, the noble swine. Mm. Oh, wow. What do you think? Mm -hmm. This reminds me of a number of nights after going out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, 
Yeah, that's a beautiful that's a beautiful thing right there. Mm -hmm. Domino's. Domino's Hawaiian pizza. I can only imagine where where your mind is going wow. right now. I think I got the I got the easy this way out on this one. What I just have to Actually it. You don't want to mess with the flavors on this. You want something that's going to just go along with the flavors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to reach into a can again because this one you you just been out catching a couple waves yeah. out on the beach. The mm -hmm. delivery man drops it off to you right there, <laughs> and you just reach into your cooler and you grab the Pinot Gris. Amen. Love that. Pinot Gris is just a great uh, white wine because it's a chameleon wine. Uh, the uh, Pinot Gris has uh, some wonderful uh, uh, kind of. Uh, kiwi and lime and uh, characteristics to it, but it molds itself to food so well that uh, it's kind of the go-to wine when you're not quite sure what to pair with, <laughs> or you have strong contrasting flavors like this. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that kiwi right off the bat. Yeah. Certainly. So it adds to that whole that tropical, tropical character yeah. and a little bit of that grapefruit little tangerine kind of quality, which complements, I think, uh, with the flavors of the uh, pineapple. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Oh, that's going to be a knock out of the park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the pizza doesn't even necessarily need to be hot, right? This could be a day old mm -hmm. slice from sitting oh. out all night. <laughs> I've had this pizza the, day, the morning after, too, so. <laughs> yeah. Mm. There's a local restaurant in town mm -hmm. um, that on their uh, Bar menu has cold pizza. So cool. Uh, uh, because every it's so familiar. Love that. Mm -hmm. Oh man, yeah. I think that works. I think that definitely works. Yeah. That's why I love you know trying food with you, Rick, mm -hmm. and, and talking wine. I mean, I never would have thought of that. You know, but it makes total sense when you break it down with the flavor profiles. It, it, it makes it almost uh, more of a. Uh, uh, it's very relaxing because this, there's uh, there's no pretentiousness to this. There's no uh, I have to think about this or anything. It's just refreshing and just great flavors mixed in together with the uh, pineapple and the uh, Canadian bacon. So yeah, yeah that is good. Mm -hmm. um, what it. Uh, what if there was smoked bacon on here? Do you think that would change your approach? Yeah, I, I might actually go with a Pinot at that point. Okay. Because that smokiness would add a little bit more intensity, and you don't, and you need to counterbalance the smoke with the wine. Otherwise, something like this, it would just be smoke. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Everybody out there, let me know what you think of the Hawaiian pizza. Is this something that we should be doing or that we shouldn't be doing? Mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious. Oh, we'll we'll probably get a lot of uh, responses on this particular part. <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed. That was a that was a good good pie. All right, uh, I think we got a knock at our door. Mm -hmm. Hey, how we do? Oh, look at this. Uh, I don't know how food safe this is in the back of your <laughs> truck, but hey, that looks good. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Oh man, look at this. Wow. It's, it's like a football. This is uh, a beets, as lovingly referred to in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, one of the uh, most famous, most influential, and kind of legendary pizza regions of, of America. Um, some people may say that uh, this um, certainly, uh, you know, can stand up to any New York pizza or any other region in the States. Um, this particular pizza is inspired by uh, Frank Pepe's in, in New Haven. Um, they, at that uh, amazing establishment there that's been around, geez, for a long time, they used to serve, you know, oysters steamed, uh, I'm sorry, clams steamed or on the ha half shell, and it was only a matter of time before they, they put it on a pizza. So this one is olive oil based, uh, some, some fresh steamed beautiful clams, a little bit of garlic as I can smell oh, already. I, I definitely smell that coming in. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's a Pecorino Romano, mm -hmm. sheep's milk, um, aged cheese. Um, which I can smell too, nice and pungent. And that pecorino has kind of that nuttiness to it, definitely. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely from that from the sheep's milk. But that's just an absolutely oh, beautiful, beautiful pizza. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. something else. All right, let's cut into this. Um, that is, that is looking good and smelling good. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's try to cut cut this. And, and this is a drier pizza. That's kind of the mm -hmm. way uh, kind of the way it's supposed to be. 
And uh, yeah, no tomato base, right? This correct. is strictly olive oil and yeah, correct. And you know that's kind of how it's that's kind of how it's supposed to be. Uh, here we go. Oh boy. Oh, there's that wind again. <laughs> it's picking up. Awesome. Thank you, Rich. Yeah. Boy, that looks terrific. Yeah. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on, not to put you on the spot, but seafood on pizza? Oh, I, I, I think it's topic. great. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, once again, the, the, the beauty about pizza is that you, it, it's your palate. I mean, it's your canvas for yeah. all the flavors, right? Sure. Uh, and and mm. so uh, uh, it just doesn't have to be a red sauce. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And this is a, it's certainly rustic in appearance. It's very mm. large. Um, you know, it's this oblong f sort of football shape, which is a traditional preparation. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. Yeah, that looks good. Good amount of olive oil. And it's it's not perfect, too. You know, mm -hmm. it's got a lot of character in its appearance. Mm -hmm. Little charred mm. bits here and there. Uh, maybe a little rip or huge blisters here and there. Um, looks like maybe some fresh oregano on there as well. Yeah. Mm. This is a white wine again, I think. Yeah. Um, that, uh, oh, man. the predominance of all... I mean, there are some actually strong flavors here. Mm -hmm. the, the, the pecorino, the clams, certainly the garlic. Mm -hmm. And you want something that's going to kind of meld all that together. Mm -hmm. uh, I think our Chardonnay is going to go well with this. I think our Diamond Chardonnay um, is uh, just kind of the right combination. Mm -hmm. the Chardonnay uh, has a little bit of creaminess, almost mm -hmm. a creme fresh quality, right, uh, to, to it. With this. And uh, then you do have some nice fruit, some, you know, a little bit of kind of these green apple and uh, a white peach and, and those flavors. Yeah. And you, a little bit of fruitiness with a little bit of creaminess, I think, mm -hmm. might really go well with something like this that really does have some rather strong, strong flavors to Definitely. it. Definitely, yeah. Boy, that's yeah. a really cool idea. And what a, a neat description and a neat characteristic mm -hmm. to get out of wine is that creaminess. Yeah. You know, the scripters are kind of funny because I've seen uh, uh, colleagues that get a little carried away with the scripters. You yeah. know, they go, well, this is a really angular wine with <laughs> structure that, you know, and I'm not quite sure what that means. Um, uh, I always call it the Frazier syndrome. You know, if you ever watch the show Frazier with Niles and his brother oh, trying yeah. out through each other in the scripters, uh, a conversation for wine should be things that everybody has. Uh, a common language for and that's why when I say something like citrus or things people yeah. usually uh, understand that if I start saying things like star fruit and others there's only a handful of people that really tried star fruit so that's awesome uh -huh. thank you Rick mm -hmm. well I really love that pizza yeah I really yeah. do that is delicious crackery type consistency mm -hmm. yeah my wife really likes the real thin crust I think mm-hmm there's that little bit of creaminess from the Chardonnay. Mm. Uh, part of that is a process where they convert a little bit of the harsher acid into a softer acid oh, in the wine yeah. making. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, some of that, that peach and citrus yeah. again. Oh boy, that is, that is so good. I love that. Mm -hmm. That really all makes sense. Mm -hmm. The citrus, the creaminess. I mean, th those things go so well with seafood and garlic. And it's delicious. Makes all the difference with those oh, wow. fresh clams. What do you think? Once again, I think this was a good example of some of the flavors for both the food and the wine changing. Mm -hmm. uh, the garlickiness of this kind of softened a little bit, and I got a little bit more of the clams mm -hmm. uh, uh, from this. You know, that little saltiness and everything from the clams. Mm -hmm. uh, but the garlic was still there, not just as as uh, robust. Yeah. And the wine actually softened a little bit. It sure did. Yeah. I mean, there was that creaminess mm -hmm. that we, we, uh, I was talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's I terrific. mean, that's the exciting part about food and wine. Uh, a, a friend of, uh, uh, of Francis's uh, was uh, Robert Mondavi, mm -hmm. and uh, you know who he uh, talked to a lot when he was uh, uh, first getting started here uh, uh, in California and making wine. Mm -hmm. And Robert always said that wine by itself is simply a beverage. Food by itself <laughs> is simply nutrition. You know, friends and family by themselves are simply company, but when you put all of them together, that's when you create an event. That's oh, when you create uh, an experience. And I think that uh, 
that's so true when you when you combine all those things together. Jeez, I love that. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is that is terrific. And is this the same Chardonnay we have in the cans? As yes, well? it is. Yeah, uh, so once again, here's here's a great option yeah. because uh, you know if I'm I'm sitting at home with some. Uh, 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 friends and everything. We order the pizza. We've got glasses out, and uh, we're pouring the wine. Yeah. Then certainly the bottle is a nice uh, uh, way of doing it. But if I'm ordering this pizza out yeah. and uh, I'm out, out, out somewhere enjoying it, then yeah. certainly the uh, the cans of the uh, Chardonnay. It's the same wine. Yeah. Uh, will do very very well. Awesome. Love that. Yeah. Awesome promotion online too. Uh -huh. Family uh, the familycoupla.com. Get mm -hmm. your uh, six four packs for under a hundred bucks. Mix and match all these awesome varietals. That is yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, so good. That actually, from uh, and I think it's a contrast because we had so many ones with the red sauce to have yeah. something like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is awesome. Okay, what do we got? We got another delivery. I'm starting to get full. We got a lot of these things coming uh, still. There's a few more. All right, that sounds good. Well, this is not delivery. This is actually DiGiorno's here. <laughs> look at that. That's official, DiGiorno's. Look at that thing. Wow, look at that. Yeah, yeah. that is a perfectly baked, presented frozen pizza. Look at that. The DiGiorno's, they've been around a long time. Mm -hmm. Kind of the, the name in frozen pizzas, I guess, if you will, huh? Mm -hmm. um, off the, uh, we have our, our Supreme Pizza here from the Di DiGiorno's. Um, as we were cooking this up in the back kitchen, one of our sous chefs, um, who may or may not be posing as our delivery gentleman today, um, got all excited when he saw us uh, bust this pizza out. So, looks like a thick crust, pepperoni, olives, black olives, uh, red and green peppers, maybe some onions. A uh, lot of flavors in there. Yeah, a lot of flavors. It's kind of deep, deep uh, crust. I think this was the... Fast rising crust or something like that. I've got um, these here. Oh uh, yeah, this is that. Uh, boy, that looks good. Uh, looks like we have some sausage on here as well. Mm -hmm. And we haven't had any peppers, or we really haven't any peppers on any of these pizzas yet, except those chili flakes. Right. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's not delivery. It's the Giorno. Have you ever enjoyed a uh, the Giorno pizza? Yes, before? I have. Yeah. Uh, I've also gotten the crust and you know made my own. Oh yeah. So excellent. Yeah, that's a good cheat if mm -hmm. you're running running low on time. Nice pillowy crust. Mm. Mm. Mm hmm. Really so this is that. a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. you know, because you do have, you do taste the greenness of the peppers and the onions. Mm -hmm. You get some of the fat and, and the saltiness and everything from the uh, pepperoni and from the sausage. Mm -hmm. That crust is thick, mm -hmm. so it sops up everything. So yeah. the crust is very flavorful because <laughs> some of those drippings that my wife likes to pat away for me <laughs> are actually soaked into the uh, crust itself. Yeah, uh, it's hearty. Yeah, it and. Is. Um, I think this may be one of the easier ones to pair with. Okay. Uh, it needs a hearty wine. Okay. And what better than a Zinfandel for something like Excellent this? Excellent call. Uh, Zinfandel is a, um, is a grape of California, right? It's a okay. grape that California is kind of known for from a historical standpoint. Okay. A lot of the immigrants brought uh, Zinfandel when it was a table grape, when they brought it over from Europe, hmm. were selling it in the marketplaces in, in, in uh, uh, on the East Coast, and when they came out to the gold fields, cool. they brought it out there. And as you know, not everybody made it rich in the gold fields, <laughs> but uh, some of those folks that migrated there found that they actually made their money selling uh, provisions to the people going to the gold fields, <laughs> and wine being an important provision. No kidding. Uh, they planted a lot of Zinfandel out there. Wow. Uh, even in our neighborhood, uh, our neighbors uh, behind us over here in uh, 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 Dry Creek Valley, uh -huh. another place that's really good um, uh, Zinfandel. Uh, Pastor Robos, another yeah. place for good Sander. It grows really well, the foothills, uh, Sierra Foothill area. So uh -huh. Zinfandel does well in California, and it is that wonderful, spicy, <laughs> and uh, uh, fruity, uh, uh, red fruit character, red wine. Yeah, Ooh, excellent. Mm -hmm. 
How can uh, olives affect uh, your uh, thought process when you're talking about wine? You know, olives for me, because they're brined, especially yeah. when we're talking about black olives, which right. is usually on a pizza, yeah. uh, they're definitely that salty component mm -hmm. on it. And there's a meatiness to it, right? Yeah. You know, almost Boy. like mushrooms have that meatiness that they have it, but it's a saltier context. Uh -huh. So I view it uh, as one of those ingredients that enhances the, f the primary flavors that are on the, the pizza. Yeah. It can be tricky though. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And then I've had the pizzas with the uh, green olives, which add another dimension to it because there is that very herbaceous quality <laughs> besides the brining quality to those wines. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, cool. Thank you. Excellent. Mm -hmm. was infantile. Mm. So there's another uh, grape that used to be considered a separate varietal called Primitivo, mm. but it is uh, uh, genetically pretty much Zinfandel. So okay. in, here in California, we actually can label Zinfandel from, as Primitivo or, yeah. or Zen. Right. It's, uh, uh, the Primitivo, though, is a name used primarily in southern Italy okay. uh, for the grape. Wow, nice. Boy, that's good. Mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Boy, so much fun. So much fun to be able to bounce back and forth between reds and whites. Yeah. Yeah, I think that works. That, that's, yeah. that's kind of a classic pairing with a pizza like this. Absolutely. I mean, it's just nice flavors. Uh, the two don't interfere with each other. There's a nice robustness to this wine. And once again, this having a little bit more dough to it, a little bit more of the, the the crust to it and everything, but that those spikes of saltiness and, and savoriness and herbaceousness in here, I think uh, that goes well. Yeah. Yeah. Nice I like job. that. Nice job. Yeah. Oh, that is good. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna lie. I'm starting to get a little full. I think we may be in the home stretch. <laughs> Boy, that is that is good. Good mm -hmm. stuff right there. Okay, let's see what we got here. Hey, how we doing? Hey. Oh man, look at this. Boy, that's beautiful. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Wow, look at this. Boy, that is a that is a beautiful looking pizza. What we have here, Rick, um, this is a dessert pizza. A dessert pizza? Yeah. <laughs> I can't say that we serve this in Russia. <laughs> but I think a lot of people are familiar with a dessert pizza, and it, 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 it sure is fun. I mean, it uh -huh. shows the... Uh, um, really flexibility, like yeah. we've talked about this whole time about pizzas, and you know we really had our salad at the beginning, we had <laughs> our entrees, and then now we're here for dessert. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what, what a, a great blank canvas to showcase uh, all different kinds of flavors. So on this particular one, we have uh, Nutella, okay, the classic uh, hazelnut and cocoa spread um, that we thinned out just with a little bit of milk to make it a little more uh, spreadable on the pizza, mm -hmm. and then we have some uh, sliced bananas and uh, this incredible uh, cheese from uh, Valley Ford. Um, it's a farmer's cheese, so it's almost like a cream cheese oh, okay. that we seasoned with um, a little bit of orange zest and uh, Grand Marnier. So there's a little bit of that orange quality uh, to that cheese. Okay, right off the bat, this is gonna be a tough one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the pressure is on. We gotta finish with this uh, interesting pizza here. All right, let's get you a slice. Have you ever had a, a Nutella pizza before? No. Yeah. No, this will be a first. Yeah. Yeah, this one's, uh, this one's unusual. Now, when you say it's going to be a tough one. Um, well, the flavor, <laughs> I mean, we, we're definitely going to something that's Thank going to have you. a lot more sweetness to it. Yes. But there's yeah. going to be a richness because of Nutella, that nuttiness and everything. And uh, uh, the traditional savory is missing from this, yeah. right? Yeah. So one of the great things about wine and food pairings is the counterbalance of savory with one of the wines. Mm -hmm. uh, with that absent and without really having a dessert wine by itself, a sweet wine in the yeah. portfolio, yeah. Uh, uh, you're really going to need to f figure out the nuances. So I hope you figure out what wine you're going to pick with this. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, it smells good. Mm-hmm. Mm. What do you think? I take that back. There is a savoriness to this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly, uh, that cheese, mm -hmm. the nuttiness, the Nutella. Mm -hmm. uh, this changes a little bit because mm -hmm. 
The Grand Marnier mm -hmm. adds that candied orange and almost cocoa flavor to it. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> um, well, we got some time. We're going to try a few wines okay. with it. Come back next week to find out what I choose for this one. Um, wow, I, yeah, that's interesting. Okay. All right. We're going to gamble on this one. I like your style. Uh, I'm going to say we're going to go with our Syrah Shiraz. Wow. A lesser known uh, wine in our diamond portfolio. Uh, Syrah is a really dark fruit character wine with really soft tannins. Yeah. Uh, the names Syrah and Shiraz uh, are intermixed. It's the same grape. The Australians call it Shiraz. Okay. Uh, the Europeans and the Californians usually use the uh, Syrah label. Okay. Uh, and uh, 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 I, th what you want to do with something like this is not overpower the, the, the flavors of a dessert mm -hmm. with a red wine that has uh, a, a fruitiness but a softness. You don't want a cab that's going to just, those tannins are going to kind of be really bitter. Mm -hmm. And especially when you have uh, kind of that hazelnut quality from the Nutella, yeah. that bitterness from that's going to come out if you have real high uh, tannic wines. Okay. So I'm banking on the fact that there is such a great boysenberry blueberry quality with softer tannins and yeah. a little bit of spiciness yeah. uh, and complementary spiciness like the nutmegs and things like that mm -hmm. that it will go well with, with with something like this because I can see a few dark berries sprinkled on on this pizza That's as well what, yeah boy that would be a nice addition mm -hmm. thank you well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I know I'm in good hands here Rick well let's see yeah this one threw me a little bit of a curveball <laughs> Mm. So once again, there's that boysenberry quality on the nose on this. A little bit of spice, a little bit of anise or that uh, licorice quality. Mm -hmm. and, and like that, not really cinnamon, but a little bit more nutmeg, that real subtle kind of character. Mm -hmm. I got a strange feeling this may work. <laughs> there's good acidity on this. That acid is really good because it counterbalances a little bit of the richness and creaminess of this wine. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> let's find out. I can't tell. It's a little if bit of a cobbler. No, there's almost a little bit of cobbler Mm. kind of character on here. Mm. See, the bananas cool are what stripper. scared me on this. Yeah, um, they are sweet. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hey, that that actually work. works. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, it is that almost putting some berries on here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, actually, I think what actually complements it is that little bit of uh, Grand Marnier you put on here. Mm -hmm. So you had that, raw, that kind of candied orange. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I actually almost get this character on the finish. Yeah. The alcohol is a little bit more present, but mm -hmm. in a good way, you know, because yeah. I'm thinking of the Grand Marnier when you get that nice warm feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting that with, with, with this as well, like in a that. positive way. Not that it's a burn that's bad, but yeah, it's that yeah. kind of finish that you get when you're uh, from the Grand Marnier. Mm. Well done. I think it'll work. I'll do that. Yeah. I'll definitely eat that again. Mm -hmm. That is good. Mm -hmm. Nice job, Rick. <laughs> mm. Cheers. Cheers. Boy, that is terrific. Mm -hmm. Nice job. What a way to go out. Threw you the curveball ready to mm -hmm. get there. Nutella yeah. pizza. Have you had some fun? Oh, this was great, Chef. Yeah. I, I, I think uh, the, the series has been great because wine and food shouldn't be complicated. Yeah. You know, it, it, it should be fun. And even something like this, it should be experimental. Yeah, and fun. Yeah, I, uh, you know, try something different. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have our go-tos, yeah. but I, I think uh, to liven it up a little bit, try something a little bit different. Yeah, uh, don't be afraid yeah. to, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Boy, that was just so much fun. I hope everybody out there uh, enjoyed themselves. Rick, always a pleasure. Yeah, it's great with, uh, working so with you, Chef. So. Yeah, you're just so knowledgeable and you, you make it so much fun and so approachable. Mm -hmm. That's what I really love about tasting wine. And yeah, and that's the key, uh, especially with the wines we're presenting here. All of these wines are just approachable wines 
Uh, they are wonderful by themselves, uh, but add a meal to them, and, and uh, they enhance everything. So. Yeah, well, that's what we're all about mm -hmm. here, yep. right? Absolutely. Yep. I wish everybody out there was here enjoying this beautiful day out in the northern Sonoma County with us. But thank you so much for joining us on uh, Who, What, Wine Pairing with uh, myself and Rick Toyota. We just had a terrific time. Don't forget, let me know what you think about that Hawaiian pizza. I'm curious to know. Uh, and uh, until next week, thanks, everybody, and cheers.